Harold opened the door that day to find a dark-skinned man in a well-cut suit smiling at him. At first he thought of reaching for his shotgun, but then he remembered that Lucille had made him sell it years ago on account of an incident involving a traveling preacher and an argument having to do with hunting dogs. Can I help you? Harold said, squinting in the sunlight, which only made the dark-skinned man in the suit look darker. Mr. Hargrave? the man asked. I suppose, Harold replied. Who is it, Harold? Lucille called. She was in the living room being vexed by the television. The news announcer was talking about Edmund Blythe, the first of the returned, and how his life had changed now that he was alive again. Better the second time around? The announcer on the television asked, speaking directly into the camera, laying the burden of answering squarely on the shoulders of his viewers. The wind rustled through the oak tree in the yard near the house, but the sun was low enough that it drove horizontally between the branches and into Harold's eyes. He held a hand over his eyes like a visor, but still, the dark-skinned man and the boy were little more than silhouettes plastered against a green and blue backdrop of pine trees beyond the open yard and cloudless sky out past the trees. The man was thin, but square framed in his manicured suit. The boy was tall for what Harold estimated to be about the age of eight or nine. Harold blinked, his eyes adjusted more. Who is it, Harold? Lucille called for a second time after realizing that no reply had come to her first inquiry. Harold only stood in the doorway, blinking like a hazard light, looking down at the boy who consumed more and more of his attention. Synapses kicked on in the recesses of his brain. They crackled to life and told him who the boy was standing next to the dark-skinned stranger. But Harold was sure that he was wrong. He made his mind do the math again and again, but still it came up with the same answer. In the living room, the television camera cut away to a cluster of waving fists and yelling mouths, people holding signs and shouting, then soldiers with guns standing statuesque as only men laden with authority and ammunition can. In the center was a small, semi-detached house of Edmund Blythe, the curtains drawn. That he was somewhere inside was all that was known. Lucille shook her head. Can you imagine it, she said. Then, who is it at the door, Harold? Howard stood in the doorway, taking in the sight of the boy. Short, pale, freckled, with a shaggy mop of brown hair. He wore an old-style t-shirt, a pair of jeans, and a great look of relief in his eyes. Eyes that were not still and frozen, but trembling with life and rim with tears. What has four legs and goes, boo, the boy asked in a shaky voice. Harold cleared his throat, not certain just then of even that. I don't know, he said. A cow with a cold. Then the child had the old man by the waist, sobbing, Daddy, Daddy, before Harold could confirm or deny. Harold fell against the doorframe, very nearly bowled over, and patted the child's head out of some long dormant paternal instinct. Shush, he whispered, shush. Harold, Lucille called, finally looking away from the television, certain that some terror had darkened her door. Harold, what's going on? Who is it? Harold licked his lips. It's, it's, he wanted to say Joseph. It's Jacob, he said finally. Thankfully for Lucille, the couch was there to catch her when she fainted. Jacob William Hargrave died on August 15th, 1966. On his eighth birthday, in fact.